Hello everyone and welcome to another pick a card reading. Today's theme is specially dedicated to this upcoming Pisces full moon, which is also a super full moon and also a blue moon, meaning that it's the second full moon in a month. So it's quite powerful and special. As you can see, I arranged a sea themed, you know, altar because Pisces does rule the seas and the oceans. And that's also symbolic because it does rule the ocean of our unconscious. And that is exactly the theme of this reading. What does the light of the full moon shine upon in the infinite sea of the unconscious, which is usually dark? So we might not be able to navigate all that much in there. And, you know, at a full moon, and I'm so sorry for this mini astrology lesson, the sun illuminates the moon from the sign of Virgo. And, you know, the sign of Virgo in tarot is the hermit. The hermit always carries a lantern or a source of light, you know, depending on the artist. So, again, shining a light on something. So this is exactly the theme of the reading again. So you are invited to choose between three different seashells. So this is the first one. The second one. And the third one. And I'm going to allow you a couple of moments to make your choice. And then we shall begin with the first seashell. Now, of course, you can make your choice based on the model of the tarot decks. So let us take away these two piles. And let's begin with the first pile. So I'm just quickly going to shuffle the cards and let's see what they say. So what is the light of the full moon revealing to you? So we already have the seven of pentacles reversed. Another card fell down and we, oh, now this tarot deck does have four additional cards and this is called the Palace of Swords. And I am going to tell you about its symbolism as we get into the reading. I'm, I'm going to keep it because I do think that it's quite relevant. Oh, and another card. The Nine of Cups. The Nine of Cups is very, very Piscean because it does reflect Jupiter in the sign of Pisces. And among so very many things, that means wish fulfillment, wish granted, or that the divine, the universe is you know, taking a look at your wish, at your desire. So four cards fell out. So I'm just going to be keeping these and that will be your tarot. So we have the king of pentacles. We have the six of coins, six of pentacles, the two of cups and the five of cups. Now this does reflect in so very many ways. Uh, and before I begin, I must just need to mention that Pisces is so much about the past and the full moon is not alone in Pisces. It is very, very close to Saturn retrograde. So again, it digs up the past. So thank you. The seven of pentacles reverse does represent that there are so very many seeds of intentions that you planted into the universe, especially things that have to do with creativity, with your passion, 
But when I say passion, it's not just a hobby. It is not something that you just dreamed up. It is where you also have mastery, you know, seven of pentacles. So the seven of pentacles is where you input effort into it. It, it is not just something that you cast into the universe. And quite possibly, this is something that you are either trying to manifest, trying to bring together, trying to give it a shape and form uh, over the course of the past seven years onto the present, of course. So this is where there is a lot of work attached to it. And that work has not been rewarded. I'm not saying that in any way, shape and form, but as the Seven of Pentacles suggests, not in a satisfactory measure. You know, if the Seven of Pentacles does depict the harvest, you only harvested, you know, something very, very, very minimal or symbolic better set symbolic where the universe did encourage you, but the harvest was not there. Now the palace of swords, this does represent mental stability and conjo in conjunction with the seven of pentacles reversed, it does mean that your mental sphere needs to actually see how you're harvesting it. It needs to see this desire, this passion, this, even lucrative purpose coming into, you know, a fruition, but in a very stable and also very rational, very logical, very down to earth way, hence the Virgo energy. But this isn't really about, this reading isn't about what did happen or didn't happen. It is about that it left a strong element of you know, disbelief, a disappointment, the five of pentacles within your unconscious, within, you know, your soul, so to speak. This is where you lost a little bit of faith. You lost a little bit of trust within your self-worth. But when I say self-worth, this self-worth is not really in a very human way, but rather in your magic, in your ability to manifest in your worth related to the divine, related to the universe. Now, on one hand, I want to say that maybe you lost a little bit of faith in the sense that you don't think that the universe sees you as valuable, as worthy, two of cups, as lovable, as you might actually need it, because what it is that you can do based on the seven of coins, it's, it's quite impressive. You know. It is either a talent you were born with, or if this is something artistic, Piscean, it is really, really, you know, amazing. It's really something that is extremely high standard. But again, from a Piscean perspective, and this is where, you know, the Nine of Cups and the King of Pentacles does suggest that the way you look at the situation, uh, excluding external reality, so this is just you where you are in your bubble, you just simply cannot believe how external reality doesn't react to it in a very concrete and stable manner. You know, because the king of uh, pentacles, the king of coins, does represent stability does represent when something is mature, something is self-sufficient, something is basically standing on its own feet and can support itself, and that something may be you in the context of this passion. Why isn't your passion, your talent, your skill, or the effort and the work that you put into it supporting you? Why isn't it, you know, standing on its own? Because you see every single reason why it should. You do see the value. You do see the worth. You do see the, how, I'm, I'm not even sure what word to use here to express it in the most authentic way possible, because this is beyond just value. This is where it's actually magical. It is like up to the highest standard. This is where 
it should be so very satisfactory because it's unique. Yeah, unique, one of a kind, whatever this is. May it be the work that you do. May it be the talent where you that you were born with. May it be a mastery that you develop. Because this is not just where someone has a talent and wakes up and, oh, I'm talented, I'm going to do something with it. This is where it's it's like a history you have with it. And you really, really developed it, refined it, alchemized it. You know, this nine of cups does mean, as I said, that you do see how it, from an internal perspective, it is completed. This is where you couldn't even want more. You couldn't even wish more because either talent wise or how it appears in your inner world, it is close to perfection. It is where you're so very grateful that you're part of it, that you are you know, connected to whatever this either desire, talent, skill, or whatever this may be. You feel so lucky, you feel so fortunate. You have a lot of under palace of swords. You have a lot of understanding. You have a lot of study. Your mental sphere kind of gets it. And this is where the five of cups comes into play. Because I, I just want to choose another card. The eight of wands reversed. Why isn't it moving forward? You know what I mean? Why isn't a quantum leap? Why isn't evolution? Why isn't, and this uh, eight of wands can represent also legal stuff, but not in a classical sense, in a sense that contracts, partnerships, you and the other, why doesn't it, why doesn't the other, whatever the other means, the world, uh, a job, uh, a community, whatever, why doesn't that other element reflect your inner truth? And this is where, Many times, a certain kind of mistrust appears within your soul. This is where sometimes you just break down because everyone, every single person does need a kind of external confirmation because without external confirmation, uh, aren't we just like Don Quixote or chasing windmills? Aren't we just living in an illusion? But this is where the Nine of Cups is also there. And, you know, the Nine of Cups, ironically, is below this Five of Cups, which means that there is a strong Piscean dichotomy within you because, on one hand, you are so grateful for the mastery, the power, the beauty, and the power of creation that you were given, along with the understanding, along with the eloquence of however the shape and form you can put it to the table in a practical manner but at the same time what is the world what is outer reality waiting for and the light of this full moon because this is basically the essence of our reading is going to be shining upon this disappointment giving you all the reasons why you shouldn't be disappointed and why you shouldn't judge your situation in a certain way where it can lead to mistrust or you seeing the universe as an unworthy partner, a partner that doesn't give you love back. And that might be a spiritual trauma within your soul. That might be something that truly hinders you from so much. But... Take note that the seven of pentacles is reversed. So you're already within the karmic period of your life where, you know, the harvest is beginning. So outer reality is starting to reflect everything that you need, basically, because wish fulfillment. But it takes time and timing doesn't depend on us. And the other thing that this full moon is going to shine a lot of light upon deep within you, that the universe is one thing and the divine, the soul, the spirit of the universe is another thing. 
we might mistake these two for the same thing because they are in a way because the universe is the divine manifested but the divine manifested has so very many different sides elements to it just look at astrology every single planet is the divine and they're so different in nature, contradictory in nature. Sometimes they're enemies in a not literal sense. Some, But other times, you know, if we look at the history of religion in a real sense. But the soul of the divine, it is beyond the universe. It is beyond everything. The soul of the divine is basically the very, very, very source of your consciousness and as long as your consciousness sees the value, feels the power, feels the inspiration, feels the motivation, you have everything that you can possibly wish for. And the light of the full moon is actually telling you with this two of cups, make the universe a loving partner to you because the more you focus on the soul of the universe, the external has to be a loving partner to you. But also keep in mind that many times that love is protective. It is where it will not uh, allow you to live an illusory success or a, a, a success with, that would be followed by a downfall. Because success many times is quite uh, luciferian in the sense that we want to grip on it we want to you know hold it tight as for as long as we can and that is exactly what it's protecting you from the illusion of it the toxicity of it this is where you need to obtain success on your own terms and the divine the soul of the divine knows you much more personally closely than the mind of the divine just the universe so this is where your story is you know not very linear not very what one would expect and that is why many times your disappointment is so great that is why your suffering is so great but the suffering is also like the pain of creation you know because when a mother gives birth that is not pleasant that is regardless of what she says painful so this is where that pain is just a confirmation of your genius it is just a confirmation that you are beyond success as identified in our day and age. So let us just choose a couple of Oracle cards to see what guidance you might get. This is so, so, so symbolic and so, you know, Related to what I just said. It says a barrier to change. Exactly the disappointment. The disappointment, the suffering, the mistrust in the outer divine, in the universe, if that make in the divine's mind, that is simply just fortifying you. That is just a confirmation to your authenticity and your own divine nature of your skills and talents. Let's choose another one. And this is exactly what the Pisces full moon is going to do for you. Show you the essence of the contradiction. Because when a contradiction meets, then you see why the divine reason to it. And this other card is... It says closed hand, the seven of coins reversed. Because this closed hand means that you could not receive. You could not get what you wanted. And that is a big, like a, a spiritual trauma, a spiritual 
disappointment, the mistrust. But it is only now when the mistrust actually shows its, how should I say, alchemical power. It is a fuel for your breakthrough. And your breakthrough is that you will no longer expect external confirmation. You will no longer define your success externally. Because the, look at the seven of pent, uh, seven of uh, sorry, six of pentacles. And also we have two energies that succeed each other. Six followed by the seven. So this is really, really good news because you will be given something, a power. And this is another type of Oracle card. Let's see what this says. Clear Endeavor. And let's choose another one. This says Make a Wish. Now, this to me says, because you will get to understand that trauma, the suffering basically of your soul, because of the hard journey you had, the scarce journey you had, but also seeing make a wish, how your wish was granted already, because you have within you such a talent and such refined mastery that it will lead to a breakthrough one way or another just that do not define your own success based on the success of the world because just like us people that's how the divine works as well if the universe is the divine manifested its soul will lead the external to change you know what i mean this is when it it still has every single chance to become a loving partner, even though it was a loving partner, but it defended you. It blocked everything that would have caused a downfall because success followed by a downfall. Now, that is something you would have never, ever recovered from. But in this way, with the Sadly, the eight of uh, wands reversed where it's slow and gradual and, you know, sometimes you are in a fervor of creation. Other times the disappointment blocks, freezes even your soul. So trust. This is where you actually get to the point where you can trust, not necessarily the partner, the divine being your yourself the internal divine, because the soul of the divine is definitely within your own soul. And that is where the truth lies. And when that is telling you that you're going to make it, you're going to make it. So thank you so much, Pile One. And I really, really hope that this resonated and was useful to you. And if you like this video, please like and share. So hello, everyone who has chosen the second shell. So let us get straight into your reading. And let's see what the light of this full moon is going to be revealing to you. And as you can see, especially if you listen to the first pile as well, I am trying not to make this predictive because this is just a truth that you have to acknowledge. So we have the two of wands. We have the Ten of Swords. We have the Two of Swords. So let's keep on going.
we have the four of wands. We have the Hierophant. Oh, these are, well, actually, um, I'm going to be keeping them. So we have Lady of Cups, which is, of course, the Queen of Cups. We have the Eight of Cups. We have the Page of Pentacles, the Moon, and the Five of Wands. I'm not going to keep the Page of Pentacles because it will just cover up space that I don't really have. So let's get straight into your reading and notice that all of your cards are upright. We don't have a, not even one reverse card. Now, this reading, I do believe that for you, it's about your life path or your soul path, so to speak. And I'm not sure that this actually uh, correlates to like a career. Um, especially because, you know, the chariot is with this two of swords, next to this two of swords. And that to me says that career itself, what you do for a living or job or what, something like that, might be one thing or not necessarily having to correlate with your soul path but your soul what your soul wants to live what your soul came here to do now that is where you might have certain how should i say this moment of crossroads and you have had this so very many times in your life why because look this four of wands that four of wands is usually a really, really positive card because it means stability, celebration, uh, being comfortable, for example, in your own home. But for you, it's quite the opposite, where many times you go against, on, on, a, on a deep soul level, on a psychological level, against comfort, against stillness, against just being very very how should i say stable without the without that's i i got what i want without that stability having a much higher purpose this is where you might have sometimes with this lady of cups an unconscious fear of being comfortable whenever you are comfortable in your life in so very many different ways you might feel that the comfort is 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 like distracting you from your soul path and this eight of cups whenever you get into comfort you kind of want to escape from it you want to go to the next whenever you get into stability and comfort that's the moment when your higher aspirations come and just flood your mind, flood your soul. And this has caused you a lot of Ten of Swords moments in your life. Because you see the Two of Wands. That's where you aimed for something. You went. You got it in a state. You got it to a stable position. And immediately the termination. It didn't last for long, basically. Because it might have seemed to you that fated forces intervened and terminated it but actually before fate came you started to feel restlessness that it's preventing you from you know something higher something like a calling something that you were meant to do so with this five of wands many times it kind of ruined your stability in so very many different ways uh, sometimes in life it was a relationship that you felt it's so stale the other partner even if they're loving even if they're wonderful whatever they're preventing my soul growth sometimes it was a job other times exactly the four of wands a house and maybe and a high priest 
again, the high priest does represent in astrology, especially the sign of Taurus. So something that is stable, something that is there for the long term. And this is where you want something that gives you the option, the chance to do a higher calling, but within your stability. And this may seem, at, especially in the present, a little bit impossible because you're aiming always for higher and higher and higher. And what, you know, the moon chariot is the way this tarot deck calls the chariot card. So how very symbolic to the full moon, because the chariot is also, uh, you know, uh, Pisces. And at the same time, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, it's cancer. <laughs> but it's still a voter sign. You know what I mean? So um, the moon chariot, basically. And cancer is the home. Cancer is your roots. Cancer is stability. So you're always kind of advancing away from that. And this is driven the motor is actually your soul which i do believe fears that kind of stability because for some reason you associate stability with staleness you associate stability by not performing your soul calling because a part of you sees soul calling as an adventure as effort, as sacrifice, you know, the more discomfort, blood, sweat, and tears it has with it, that's what your soul sees as, you know, you're definitely on the right path. But the other side of you, because maybe you might be a, a very dual energy, maybe a dual sign, or you might have strong uh, placements in dual signs in, in your chart, or you have a dual nature, the other side of you uh, is quite the opposite. The other side of you wants to live life. The other side of you wants to immerse into something and stay there. So there is like always an inner conflict within you. And whenever this inner conflict gets too heated, you have these 10 of um, swords moments. So termination. This is where you just pull the plug. And what the light of the full moon is going to be shining upon you is that whatever this is, both the stability and both the sense of adventure, the higher soul calling, uh, many times battling within you, all of those may stem from either a past life for some people and for other people, the contradictory worldviews of your parents. Maybe one parent was aiming for stability. The other parent was aiming always for something higher. And there was either an energetic or real conflict between them. And you kind of embodied both of it. Yet the full moon is going to tell you something radical and simple. The eight of cups. Uh, yeah, eight of cups. Abandon both. Because your soul calling is simply enjoying life and when i say enjoying not in a high priest way with the five senses but just being in your life where you many times you don't need soul calling you don't need something higher you just need to make life your own you just need to be living life in the present however it is that you can and if you feel that you're not doing something higher well, having certain dreams, and when I say dreams, not dreams which you, in unconscious state dreams where you sleep, but aspirations, you know, 11th house or Aquarian type of dreams, and contemplating them, energizing them, philosophizing, conversing with the universe, that is basically part of your soul path where you don't necessarily have to do anything. Uh, concrete you don't have to make like big sacrifices life doesn't have to be like a huge adventure sometimes being in your 
in the comfort of your being and analyzing life because the universe breathes through us. Sometimes all the karmic forces desire from you is to breathe in life and analyze it, make it your own. Now let's choose a couple of Oracle cards. When I said couple, actually two fell out, so I'm going to be keeping this. One says desire, and the other says familiar comfort. This is so ironic because... They're exactly the two forces that I spoke about. This, sorry, I... Yeah, this is... I, I touched my microphone. So desire uh, does represent your aiming for higher, always wanting to do something better, something more, you know. I don't, I do believe this image of the two of swords is the best possible depiction. I'm going to show it to you. Just always driving yourself to a higher calling, being more useful, uh, spiritually speaking, but many times it's blind. You're driving into totally uncharted and blind territories for the sake of discovery, when sometimes that discovery is already within your breast, while other times, you know, familiar comfort. All your soul wants is just to, and I'm going to show you the image again. Contemplate in comfort with a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and just allow the epiphanies to wash through you. And this, both of these desire, both of these cards, the desire and the familiar comfort do suggest that this is the duality that is always, always, you know, battling within you. And many times it actually is like your motor. It is what makes you tick. But at those moments in your life, when they tire you, when they get you the, into a 10 of swords position, that's when you're, when you're burned out totally. When, when you're in total confusion, when you're at total crossroads, where you're blind to everything, blind to yourself, blind to your opportunities, blind to the future, you just don't know what to do because these two forces got tired. So the motor stopped. That is when you need to just abandon. Abandon your drive to be useful. Abandon your life path from, you know, animating you. Just drop down into the present. Drop down into just breathing life because that is the main soul path. That is the main duty that all of us have to ourselves and ultimately our creator. Now let's choose a couple of other type of Oracle cards. Oh, well, this is way too many. Actually, two were upright, so I'm going to be keeping those. One says, shift your energy. Exactly. And the other says, gratitude and appreciation. These are so very symbolic and relevant as well. Because shift your energy is usually when you set out for the new adventure. And gratitude and appreciation is when you drop into a stability and comfort. So these cards do represent that you do need to balance out these two forces working within you. In a very, how should I say, rational way. In a very Virgo way, actually by understanding yourself, giving yourself an adventure when, when everything in your being screams that you need this, 
but do not compromise your stability. You know, um, how should I say? Advent the sense of it, the desire to go higher, to you know, be useful, to go and do something magical in the world. That should not take away your gratitude for the stability that you already have. This is where your in when your inner forces start falsely identifying whatever it is that you have in your life. So basically your stability as stale, as outdated, as being behind everyone, as missing out. That's when you really, really need to take control and detach, sit down exactly with that cup of coffee and make order, uh, create a balance between your contradictory forces. Because in this way, whatever you inherited either from your previous existence or for some people from your parents, that both of it is a blessing. You don't need to choose one or the other. Two can operate at the same time, but what you need to do is create an inner balance and understand yourself and accept your duality. Because I do believe that you don't, um, I'm not saying you don't like your duality, but you don't see it with good eyes. You want to either embody one or the other when you can have both at the same time. And hence the Oracle card, gratitude and appreciation, appreciate everything that you have. So thank you so much for listening. I really hope that this resonated. And if it does, please like and share because it really, really helps my channel. So wishing you a blessed full moon. So finally, hello everyone who has chosen the third shell, this one. <laughs> that was this from the second pile. So let's shuffle your cards and get into your reading. So let's see what the light of this full moon wants to reflect at you. And we do have a couple of cards fallen out already. But before I put them out, I just want to say that for the other powers as well, I don't want to make this necessarily predictive. I want just to give you guidance with whatever is being illuminated within you. So we have the Four of Pentacles. And it says security. We have upheaval. So the three of swords reverse. We have. The queen of pentacles reverse. We have uh, the king of swords upright. We have the hierophant. And we have. Again, of very many court cards, uh, the page of wands. So I'm just going to take a few more because I am usually not a huge fan of court cards, to be totally honest with you. We have eight of one, uh, sorry, swords, and the keyword is trapped. And we have two final cards, which is the Ace of Pentacles and the Magician Reverse. Now, I do believe that these cards do represent uh, an inner struggle that you have to... How should I explain this in the very best way? Because this will mean slightly different things for different people figuring out your life, how to be and embody your very, very best version. Because you might have so very many um, misconceptions 
about yourself. And you might many times in your life and in certain periods in your life falsely judge yourself as a very imperfect version of yourself who made so many mistakes in certain relationships, in certain even um, professional job kind of relationships or studies. So there is a strong energy of self-criticism here. And this is, I have to say, not the aggressive self-criticism, just that your point of view was never ever directed um, for you to be your own best friend. You know what I mean? You always criticized yourself, you know, like a point of view, like from a very, very strict parent, very strict teacher, very strict manager, very strict, let's say, romantic partner. So you never ever had a self approach where you're actually self supportive and very friendly, very understanding towards yourself. And this is the upheaval, the three of swords. Very many times, who broke your heart was actually you. Because of this king of swords. Now, the king of swords is where you wanted to see reality from a very, very stark, down-to-earth perspective. And very many times that defeated you because who is the judge of what is of how things should be basically because sometimes the whole of society the whole of the world the whole of education system is actually incorrect especially if they lack sympathy if they lack empathy if they lack heart based energy now i what does heart-based energy mean seeing a situation through the lens of the heart because this is so much air energy and the magician reverse so very many times you were the one who um drowned basically your dreams you were the one who minimized yourself your worth no, i don't want to say self your worth and not necessarily an outer force and sometimes the universe in a way was forced to confirm your criticism and also mm, this very stark down to earth approach either you inherited from someone very relevant in your life like a parental figure or a teacher who for whom this approach to life and through any situation was actually positive either because it was the key to their either survival professional success or this made them very very valuable in the eyes of others again i repeat either professionally or within a domain an industry family but the thing is you're not like that person your inner configuration your own psyche's uh, constructive elements are very different. And you, on one hand, you can absolutely operate like that person, whoever you got these patterns from. Because don't get me wrong, you saw whatever that person was doing in a very positive light. You saw it as a very, very strong virtue because it did things. For example, that person, look at this king of swords. Either could anticipate some situations and they were prepared. And in life, that's a massive plus. Or, you know, they could give very safe, sound, strong advice to others. Anyway, how they were critical in nature. But I'm not saying that in a in a negative way. You know, it this is they're, they're not toxic, but they were critical, they were analytical. And again, life to them was like a chess game. They had to be one step ahead. And for them, as I said, it was ultimately positive because they depended on it. 
their life was in such a way that it shaped them into this, to use their intelligence in this way. And even though you can do the same thing because you have the intelligence and you saw this as a power, as a virtue, as all the advantages that this person and also this person might have taught you, but you are not like that really on a soul level. That's just one part of you that needs to activate when the situation is really, really bad. You know, when you really need a strong down-to-earth approach. But life, many times, is different. That very strong down-to-earth approach is only needed at certain moments which don't take up most of your life or situations or whatever. You're actually a different kind of person, you know, the hierophant you are you have a very strong faith um faith fueled um intelligence now how should let me translate this because the magician is like mercury the magician is where you control reality based on your intellect based on mind over matter simply says simply said but there is a Jupiterian type of intelligence where you just know certain things because either inner forces or outer forces made you believe in them strongly. And that is way more superior than the magician, than the Mercury or this king of swords. You have that kind of gift. And you can imagine when you use a cocktail of both, you make yourself believe based on criticism and you know down to earth logic certain things of course you break your heart so and this critical approach you know the four of pentacles is is deeply rooted already or was deeply rooted in inside of you and that is what keeps you many times trapped that is what basically binds you and I do believe that you already know this about you. You already figured this out. And this Ace of Pentacles is really, really good because something happened in your life not long ago, which reset, which actually reset you psychologically. And this is where it is your duty, Magician Reverse, to reroute your way of thinking, your lower mind, your Gemini mind, so to speak, to serve you in a different way. But this doesn't mean to go against that parental figure, teacher, or whoever you, you learn this critical and tactical approach from, but it just says, store it as a, pow as a super one of your superpowers, but choose your own authenticity, even if that goes 180 degree against this king of swords type of energy and when you do when you truly reformat your way of thinking and your analytical mind and make it your own because the high priest is what you were born with and what you were born with is rudimentary is like the intelligence of nature you know you are connected to the living earth like wild animals, especially birds, have a built-in GPS system, which never, ever, ever, ever fails. So do you. What need do you have for this strong game of chess type of energy, the anticipation and all that? When you are blessed with a certain kind of magnetism, which always shows you the way. So let's get a bit of... an. That is what the full moon is going to reveal in your life. That many times the gut, instinctual intelligence is way superior than, you know, the, the analytical hair splitting, needle in a haystack kind of elements of the, of the mental sphere. So, and the ace of coins, you know, origin, exactly. Return to your natural way of thinking. Return your natural way of seeing. 
the world and you know feel it feel the world feel what is right and wrong what is wise and and this again this isn't really like strong high elevated intuition no 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 this is primal instinct Come on, Oracle cards, give us some wisdom here, okay? We have an adult. And in this picture, we actually have the moon and the next to the moon, a star. And that would be the moon, full moon conjunct Saturn. Okay, we have another one. We have consistency. Now, I do believe that this card say, say that, you know, that logical, a tactical, and critical, analytical approach to life, where this should be done this way, that way. Let's get, let's look at everything from a very down to earth perspective. What is logical, what is not. Now, that was in a way, part of either your education, you know, an adult, you were forced to be an adult even when you were a child because either you had hardships in your life or you needed to support a parent of yours for any reason but so you had to think like an adult look at the world as as an adult so that and cons consistency with that you know of course it programmed this this very very strong adult point of view into your being and i do believe that that is what you must shift return to the child return to seeing and feeling the world like a child and be consistent with that uh, i am so guided to get another one here <laughs> and this third one means resistance exactly resist when the self-criticism or the analytical critical powers superpowers because your very intelligence of your mind want to you know make you shift into that tactician guy or girl sorry and return to a ch the childlike state because that will reconnect you to nature's own magnetism and intelligence and finally, a different set of tarot cards. Uh, sorry, oracle cards. So we have an, another pile had this gratitude and appreciation. And another one, please. We have another two, actually. Be in service. And ideal course of action. Now, these, I do believe, are just further confirmations. Be in service. What I said when you were young, you had to serve in the sense that you had to think like, learn to think like an adult, see the world as an adult to help a parent or to help a sibling or to help someone. So you basically were like a superhero child because you done things that very, very, very few children would be able to do. And maybe I'm not even expressing this correct, not would be able to do, because I do believe many children have this power. Just that 
they weren't forced to do it. An ideal course of action. Very many times you could not make mistakes. You could not afford to have bad choices. And life should be about making mistakes. And you as a child, you weren't allowed to be in the wrong. I'm not sure why. Maybe that parent was very strict or maybe because your situation was such that you really need to needed to get to not make mistakes you know what i mean not to burden anyone or you know your specific you know and gratitude and appreciation this is where that's a superpower but that is where the superpower can't become your lifestyle only when it's needed so again Pisces is dual, you know what I mean? The two fish swim in opposite ways. So be in service now to yourself. Ideal course of action. Mistakes are blessings. Don't be afraid of making mistakes because that is trial and error. Listening to your gut is never, ever, ever a mistake. And gratitude, and exactly. Sometimes be grateful for mistakes, even if, those all are only mistakes to the critical mind, but not really to your inner nature given intelligence. So thank you for listening. I really hope this resonated and that you found this useful. If you'd like, please share and like and you know subscribe because it will really help my channel. And, you know, if you'd like to support me and my work, you can donate in the PayPal link in the description below. Thank you, everyone, and wishing you a magical, super full moon. And if this full moon, you know, pulls up, you know, heavier emotions from you, know that you're never alone. If no one else, the divine is there by your side and reach out for help. And, you know, try to stay in balance. Thank you, everyone. And until next time, bye for now.